गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स स्टूडेंट्स टॉपिक इज ग्रेड ट्वेल्व ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री हेलो ऑर्किन्स एंड हेलो ऑरेंस इन दिस वे आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द क्लासिफिकेशन नॉमन क्लेचर एंड आइसोमरिज्म ऑफ हेलो ऑर्किन्स एंड हेलो ऑरेंस सो बिफोर वी एंटर इन टू क्लासिफिकेशन लेट एस आइडेंटिफाई वॉट इज मन बाई हेलो ऑल्किन द नेम सजेस्ट दैट यू आर हैविंग एन ऑल्किन एंड the functional group halogen so in short you can also write it as rx so what is r here you know methyl group and x is halogen example we have methane here so if you are taking this alkane in that what we can do is in the place of hydrogen if you substitute with x it can be fluoro chloro bromo and i but as fluorine is highly reactive we don't consider this iodine is least reactive we don't consider this so generally if hydrogen is replaced with either chlorine or bromine then you can call it as halo alkene so we can write rx where r is alkyl group and x can be halogen so we can discuss about this in detail under classification first one we can study about halo alkene and again halo alkene can be classified into based on number of halogens and second one is based on the type of carbon to which it is attached so first point is very simple when we are classifying halo alkene we will consider how many number of halogens are there and second one is what is the nature of carbon second one we have halo alkene the name itself suggest we are having carbon double bond carbon third one is halo alkyne we have c triple bond c connected with halogen here c double bond c connected with halogen fourth one is halo arene nothing but aromatic ring is present with the halogen so in this again we have nuclear substituted halogen derivative and second one is side chain substituted halogen derivative see we will discuss all this in detail next very important thing is based on hybridization based on hybridization these can also be classified as the compounds containing carbon sp3x bond where you are having sp3 hybridization and second type is carbon sp2 x bond these compounds will contain this type of hybridization and the last one is the compounds which contain carbon sp x bond that means they show sp hybridization so under classification we are going to discuss these headings now let me give the names also here when you talk about number of halogens if there is one halogen you call it as mono halogen derivative two halogens di halo derivative three halogens tri halo derivatives and if you are having more than 3 4 you call it as poly halogen derivatives fine now type of carbons we will discuss about this we can have primary secondary and tertiary type of carbons based on that you will also have the primary secondary and tertiary halogens fine now let us take examples first one already we are familiar with halo alkene that is an alkene in which hydrogen is replaced with halogen now let us consider chlorine in this condition 
we have substituted only one halogen that is one hydrogen is replaced with one halogen so this comes under monohalo derivative second one you can replace two hydrogens with the two halogen now you can call it as dihalo derivative now first one we can give it a name chloromethane once again about nomenclature we will discuss that time we will go in detail so meth is the root word ane the single bond then chloro we are having that in the first position similarly this is again with one carbon meth and two chloro are there hence we call it as dichloromethane so hope you are able to understand the types of haloalkenes depending upon the number of halogens similarly if you are having tri you can take like this in this h so it is nothing but trichloromethane so in this condition we have three halogens hence you call it as trihalo derivative similarly if you go beyond this you can also have ethane where you can get up to 6 chlorines so this is nothing but hexachloroethane so due to the number of halogens we have classified this now coming to the second type of classification what do you mean by primary carbon secondary carbon and tertiary carbon grade 11 we already discussed this so depending upon the number of carbon atoms we will classify let us take a simple example no need to name this compound here i am just showing you the number of carbons connected so let us understand from here if you start giving numbering we have four five let us take five carbons in this condition if you come across with uh, c1 c1 is connected with only one carbon if you see to the right you are having only one carbon connected to c1 if at all you are having only one carbon you represent that as primary carbon so therefore c1 can be represented as primary next coming to c2 if you observe c2 you can see that it is connected with three other carbons if it is connected with the three other carbon very simple you call it as tertiary represented as 3 upon 0 so hope you are able to follow next coming to c3 the third carbon if you see it is surrounded by 1 2 3 and 4 other carbon hence you call it as quaternary carbon so this is nothing but primary carbon this is tertiary carbon and this is called as quaternary carbon now come to c4 if you take c4 to the left you have one carbon and to the right you are having another carbon so it is surrounded by two other carbons hence you call it as secondary carbon secondary carbon so hope you have understood this very important classification that is nature of carbon or types of carbons depending upon the surrounding carbons we have primary secondary tertiary and quaternary carbons now what is the relation with this with your haloalkenes very simple depending upon the carbon you will classify halogens like this suppose you want to write primary i have one with the chlorine so this is one example and second one is you can take this as an example now the uh, chlorine is connected with this carbon and here chlorine is connected with this carbon this is c1 and this is c2 very simple if at all a carbon is having one carbon surrounded to that or no other carbons then it is considered to be primary carbon and this you call it as primary halo alkene 
Why it is primary? Because this carbon is primary. This carbon is primary. And here also we can say that this is considered to be primary as it is connected with only one carbon. Now we can write it as primary halo. Okay. Now what is meant by secondary? So secondary carbon says that it is surrounded by two other carbons. So we can easily write like this. The same example if you take connected by here you can take one carbon and this can be CH2 one, fine. So in this example this carbon is connected with one and two other carbons hence it is known as secondary you can complete the hydrogens like this. So we call it as secondary halolycan naming and all we will do later. Now what we are doing, we are just doing the classification. So as you can observe in this, this carbon is connected to your halogen. This is your halogen. And what is the nature of this? It is secondary because surrounded by two different carbons. Hence you call this as secondary halo alkyl. Now coming to tertiary. So tertiary halo alkyl also you can draw very easily. So what is tertiary now? The halogen should be connected to the tertiary carbon. Now let us take this is your carbon and the halogen. So it is surrounded by three different carbons. So this particular carbon will be considered to be tertiary carbon and the whole thing you call it as tertiary halo. So hope you have understood this. So depending upon the type of carbons, we have primary, secondary and tertiary halo molecules. Now, what is the second type of classification? The second type of classification is halo alkene. What is meant by alkene? Everyone knows. Alkene is nothing but carbon double bond carbon. Fine. Now the first one is completed, so let us erase this. So we have completed the first type of classification. Now in the second one, we can write like this. I will give a simple example. Let us take vinyl functional group. It's a common name. And second one is allyl functional group. And take halogen as the chlorine. Next, what is meant by vinyl? Vinyl is CH2 double bond CH. And what is allyl? To this vinyl group, we have one methylene group connected. Very simple. This whole group is known as vinyl group. And to this vinyl group, if you add CH2, then it will become allyl. Just mention Cl and here you mention Cl. So hope you are able to understand this. So vinyl chloride or allyl chloride in this what we understand is we are having the double bond. Okay. Next. These are considered to be haloalkenes. Now what are haloalkynes? Halo alkynes are nothing but if your halogen is connected to triple bond suppose you have one more carbon to this fine so the halogen is connected to the triple bond and again here you have the halogen connected to triple bond so in both the conditions we can say that because of the halogen connected to alkyne this is known as halo alkyne so very simple examples next what are halo arenes and in that you are classifying them as nuclear substituted and side chain substituted let us see with the examples so halo arenes what is meant by halo arene 
see just now we have discussed about halo alkane saying that in the alkane hydrogen is substituted with halogen similarly if you are taking arene nothing but aromatic ring in that you are substituting halogen that is with the hydrogen now let us see with the example first one so this is aromatic ring and here if hydrogen is substituted with the chlorine so let us take you have chlorine here now this is called as chlorobenzene and we can say that it is a nuclear substitution that means if at all you are bringing out a halogen directly connecting to the aromatic ring that is to the ring you are connecting that is considered to be nuclear substituted derivative fine now this is chlorobenzene and you know this is called as mono substitution what is meant by mono substitution only one hydrogen is replaced with one halogen suppose you are talking about di substitution so what is meant by di substitution two hydrogens are replaced with with the two halogens then that is called as di substitution we have three types what are those three let me mention here one comma two substitution is also called as ortho represented as o next one comma three meta represented as m this m and small letters next one comma four para we are representing it as p just remember o m p nothing but one two one three one four substitution taking the examples let us take bromine we have three benzene rings aromatic ring we are going to do nuclear substitution that means hydrogens to be taken from the benzene ring now i'll take bromine and bromine that means hydrogens are substituted from 1 comma 2 position if it is 1 comma 2 position we call it as ortho so we can write it as ortho di bromo benzene fine now second one you have to substitute in 1 comma 3 position so this is 1 this is 3 so we have substituted two hydrogens with the two bromines nothing but di substitution and the position is 1 comma 3 hence you call it as meta so represented as small m meta di bromo benzene so hope you are able to follow this the third one nothing but 1 comma 4 substitution here so this is 1 2 3 and 4 position so you call it as para di bromo para di bromo benzene so hope you are able to follow this so first and foremost thing is if you are taking haloarene it is of two types number one if you replace hydrogen directly from the benzene ring or aromatic ring you call it as nuclear substituted if you replace hydrogen from the side chain that is called as side chain substituted derivative so first one hope you have understood now let us move to the second type side chain again taking the benzene ring so if at all you want to substitute side chain you can do like this first and foremost you have one halogen here in the second example you have two halogens 
and in the third example you have three halogens so that means the hydrogens are substituted like this now this is CH2 here it is CH very important thing is what you observe we observed that earlier it was CH4 and from that what we did all hydrogens here we can substitute like this we got a phenyl ring here and remaining two hydrogens are as such so the methane what we have earlier this is the main carbon that is nothing but we are substituting hydrogens and attacking this with the phenyl ring hence what do you call this this is called as side chain we did not replace the hydrogen directly from the ring we have taken from the side chain now this is called as benzyl benzyl chloride so if it is ch2cl then you call it as benzyl as common name if you want to write IUPAC name you know that it is methane and chloromethane so from chloromethane at first position what you have you have phenyl group so we can say that it is phenyl chloromethane in common name you can write it as benzyl ch2cl next second one is benzyl chloride so benzyl chloride and again you have a pack name like this dichloromethane and first position you are having phenyl group phenyl nothing but c6h5 group so hope you are able to understand this here also you know that earlier you had methane so in that methane what we have done two hydrogens are replaced with two chlorines like this and one hydrogen replaced with a phenyl group and you are left with only one hydrogen so hope you are able to understand this so methane was the main carbon what we had that is from that we have prepared the halogen now the last one so this is benzo trichloride benzo trichloride and if you are writing the IUPAC name here we have trichloromethane and first position you are having phenyl group fine so these are all the examples for the side chain substitutions so hope you are able to understand this Now in the classification, the last one, based on hybridization, based on hybridization, already you are familiar with hybridization in grade 11. So we have the compounds with CSP3X bond, second one CSP2X and third one is CSPX, nothing but these are the hybridization shown by these compounds first one let us first write the name of the compound then we will see with the structures so sp3x is nothing but exhibited by haloalkanes and also so we have you can say benzyl halides okay first one second one it is exhibited by vinyl halides and arenes that is halo arenes and last one SPX is generally shown by halo all kinds and nothing but carbon triple bond carbon attached to the halogen one more important thing also you can have nothing but align halides so one by one let us discuss the hybridization first one csp3x what is haloalkane with the example if you are taking let us consider chlorine here and this is ch2 and here ch fine this is example and we can 
give the name also chloroethane. In this, the halogen is connected to this particular carbon. And we have to identify what is the hybridization of this carbon. And as you know, this particular carbon, if you see the number of atoms surrounding to this, I think you can understand this much better. I have expanded this. So this particular carbon is surrounded by four atoms. And you know, if it is surrounded by four atoms, definitely the hybridization will be sp3. If a carbon is surrounded by three atoms, the hybridization will be sp2. All this we already know. Suppose if the atom is surrounded by only two, then you call it as sp hybridization. So if you know this, we can easily solve this. So depending upon this, what we conclude, this particular carbon, because surrounded by four different atoms, hence, you can say that the hybridization is sp3. Hence, what do you call this? It is the compound which is exhibiting CSP3X bond. Hope you have understood this. So, first one is under halo alkane. One example, it is enough. Now, second one is benzyl halide. Just now we have seen. In the side chain substitution, that is, here we have CH2 and you can take Cl or X or bromine, whatever. Now, what we have to see? The halogen is connected to this carbon and we should check the hybridization. So, carbon with hydrogen, chlorine, hydrogen and here, it is connected with the phenyl group wherein you have another carbon. Now you can easily identify this particular carbon, what will be the hybridization? 1, 2, 3, 4 atoms are there. It is surrounded by 4 atoms, hence the hybridization will be sp3 hybridization. Therefore, you are studying this benzyl halides under CSP3X bond compounds. Next, the third one which is nothing but allyl halides. We have written like this. CH2 double bond CH is known as vinyl group. To this vinyl group, if you add one methylene that is CH2, it will become allyl group. So allyl halides, you can take any example. So bromine you add. Fine. So now we need to consider the hybridization of this carbon. Why? Because the halogen is connected to this carbon. Now, let us expand this and write. You have two hydrogens. Here one bromine. And left side you are having one carbon. So, this particular carbon, what will be the hybridization? One, two, three, four atoms are surrounding. If four atoms are surrounding to the carbon, you consider that it is having sp3 hybridization. Therefore, what we observe? We observe now that haloalkane, benzyl halides and allyl halides, these three comes under the compounds which contains CSP3X hybridization. So, hope you have understood this. Now, let us see the second one. Now, the next one is the compounds are containing CSP2X bond. Under that, we have vinyl halides as well as the haloarenes, that is nuclear substituted haloarenes. Now, what is vinyl CH2CH? We know to that chlorine or bromine you can add or add it. So, the halogen is connected to this carbon. So, what is the hybridization of this? Now, if you expand this and see, it is surrounded by 1, 2, and 3 atoms. Hence, if at all the carbon is surrounded by 3 atoms, it has the hybridization of sp2. Hence, what do you call this? This vinyl halides can be considered to be csp2 X compounds. Next, in halo arrange here, halogen is connected to this carbon. Now, let us see what is the hybridization. I have expanded that. So, C double bond C, here C single bond C and bromine. You can see that it is surrounded by 1, 2 and 3 atoms. 
Hence, you can say that the carbon exhibits sp2 hybridization and haloarenes with the nuclear substitution are considered to be the compounds containing CSP2X bond. Now the last one that is CSPX. So when you observe here, the examples are very simple, nothing but haloalkynes. We can take any two haloalkynes as an example and uh, explain CSPX. Let us see what are the examples we can consider. First one, C triple bond, C in this, you have the halogen here. So here H and uh, we can see the halogen is connected to this carbon. Now if you expand that, you can understand that it is surrounded by one and two atoms. If at all the carbon is connected by two other atoms, then you can say that it exhibits sp hybridization. Hence, we can say this particular compound that is chloroethane is exhibiting CSP X bond here. Now, one more example you take. Now you can add some more carbons. So to this, we can see that when you consider the halogen is connected to this, so definitely you need to expand only this. So here you can understand that this carbon is connected with only two atoms. Hence we can say that this is exhibiting sp hybridization. Due to this, we consider that these two compounds, that is haloalkynes, comes under the compounds which are containing sp dash x bond. Now let us move to the nomenclature. Now we need to discuss about nomenclature. As we are familiar, the naming of organic compound can be done in two methods. First one is common names and second one, the most accepted IUPAC names. That is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So they have devised the rules to identify the names of the compound. Now if you are seeing the common names, first one, we have three carbons and one hydrogen is replaced. Hence, you know, according to this, we call it as propyl group. Halogen is bromide. Then what do you mean by N here? Very important thing is, if at all, any carbon chain is written in a straight chain, in a normal way, you can represent it as normal. That normal is written as N. Hence, this compound can be written as N propyl bromide. That means three carbons are written in a straight chain. Next, the second one. Here we have one, two, three carbons and we understand that the halogen is connected with this carbon. And what is the nature of this? This is secondary carbon. As you know, surrounded by two carbons. Hence, it is written as secondary. So, secondary are a secondary haloalkane. So, SCC represents secondary as it is propyl bromide. The difference between these two, first one is written in a continuous chain. In second one, the halogen is connected with the secondary carbon. Now, same way, if you have four carbons, nothing but butyl group, bromide, and once again, N indicates that the chain in is, is nothing but in a straight form. Again, if you are connecting the halogen to this, and the nature of this will be secondary carbon. Why it is secondary carbon? On the left side and the right side, you have two carbons. Hence, it will become secondary carbon. Hence, we will write it as SCC, nothing but secondary. So, secondary butyl bromide. Similarly, the next compound. As you are aware, the halogen is connected to this carbon. And the nature of this is tertiary. Hence, you will write TERT. What is TERT? Nothing but it indicates it is the halogen is connected to the tertiary carbon. So, hope you have understood the common names. Now, writing the IUPAC name is very easy. So, you follow the normal rules. First one, what is the root word? Prop. The carbons are connected with the single bonds, hence, it is ANE. 
एंड फंक्शनल ग्रुप इज क्लोरो सो हेंस वी रोट क्लोरो प्रोपाइल नाउ द सेकंड वन दिस इज द लॉन्गेस्ट चेन वंस अगेन प्रॉप सिंगल बॉन्ड्स आर देयर बिटवीन कार्बन ए एंड ई एंड यू गिव नंबरिंग फ्रॉम हियर सो यू विल गेट टू क्लोरो प्रोपाइल कमिंग टू द थर्ड कंपाउंड द रूट वर्ड इज ब्यूट why you wrote but because four carbons are there 1 2 3 4 single bonds a and e now first position you have bromo so hence you can either write it as one bromo butane or simply bromo butane here also it can be one chloropropane or chloropropyl coming to the fourth compound the root word is again but single bonds a and e and if you give numbering you are going to get at the second position the functional group is connected nothing but two bromo butane the last one this will be your longest chain so the longest chain three carbons hence prop single bonds a and e so propane and give numbering so 1 2 and 3 so what you are having here you are having two bromo and two methyl propyl so second position bromo as well as methyl hence we write like this in rules of nomenclature we have discussed all these things so in this five compounds we have discussed about n secondary and tertiary now the last three compounds wherein we are studying about iso and the neo So earlier we have discussed about n secondary and tertiary. Now what do you mean by n iso neo? Let us see. In the structural isomerism we have discussed this. Suppose you are having five carbons in a continuous chain, then you call it as normal. Nothing but we have used n pentane. So this we have discussed. Now what is meant by iso? If there is one group. now we can say that to this carbon you are having one group connected so we can say that if there is one group present at the second last carbon okay if you consider this is the last carbon nothing but second last carbon so to that if a methyl group is there one group is present then you call it as iso and common name hence we will write it as pentane isopentane suppose you are representing two groups like this so what are these things now two methyl groups two groups are present at second last carbon fine then you call it as neo so hence we write it as neo pentane so very simple once again i'll explain if you are writing the carbons in a straight chain it is normal n if one group is present at second last carbon this is last this is second last carbon then you call it as iso next one if two groups are present at second last carbon one and two two groups are present at second last carbon this is the last this is second last carbon then you call it as neo the same thing is applicable here what do you observe the five carbons are arranged in a straight chain it's a normal hence you call it as n pentyl bromide and you can also represent it as amyl group what does amyl stands for c5h11 if you have five carbons or you can say pentyl group can also be written as amyl group so you can call it as n amyl bromide second condition this is 1 2 3 4 second last carbon is having one methyl group therefore it matches with this condition if one group is there at second last carbon you call it as iso hence we have written it as iso then pentyl group and halogen chloride you can also call it as iso amyl iso amyl chloride now the last one if you give a numbering this is 1 2 and 3 again 
second last carbon is having how many groups here two methyl groups are present if two methyl groups are there then what do you call neo hence you call it as neo pentyl chloride now writing iupac names very easy follow the rules first one you are having five carbons so what is the root word the root word is pent hence we can write like this pent between carbon single bond a and e next first position bromo is there hence it is one bromo pent now coming to the second one you can give numbering from the direction of chlorine because it is having more priority compared to methyl hence we say you have four carbons but single bond a and e next so one chloro and methyl one chloro and three methyl butane see again you know see alphabetical order comes first m comes later that's why we have written this now the last one one two three hence the root word is prop a n e next this is chloro and this is methyl so hence we can write it as one chloro and second position you are having two methyl groups hence it will become 2 comma 2 dimethyl so hope you have understood this with this we have completed the nomenclature now the last one is about isomerism now in the isomerism we have two types haloalkenes will exhibit chain isomerism as well as position isomerism so in the previous lectures we have discussed clearly what is meant by isomerism if two compounds have same molecular formula but they have different arrangement of different arrangement of carbon chain then you call it as chain isomers and the phenomenon is called chain isomerism very simple let us talk about n iso and the neo if you discuss these three things then it is easier for us to express the chain isomers first one take five carbons with bromine because it is in a continuous chain you can call it as normal hence n because five nothing but pentyl bromide let us write only the common names so we have taken five carbons with the bromine next iso one group at second last carbon here let us write one methyl group then this is considered to be iso so we can write it as isopentyl bromide isopentyl bromide in the previous explanation hope you are able to understand this now the third one is take two methyl groups at second last carbon fine now this particular compound is written as neo why it is neo because two groups are present at second last carbon now for these three compounds if you check the molecular formula what is the molecular formula for this you have five carbons hence the c5 hydrogen you see 3 5 7 9 10 11 h11 br second one five carbons and hydrogens 3 4 7 8 9 10 11 br now the last one once again you have five carbons and hydrogens 3 3 3 9 10 11 and br we can understand that the three compounds that is haloalkanes are having same molecular formula but they have different arrangement of carbon chain first case it is in the form of continuous chain second one iso and third one is neo so this is an example for the chain isomers and the phenomenon is called chain isomerism now second one is position isomerism what is meant by position isomers 
the position isomers will have the different position of functional group let us see the examples so now we have understood that the following are the three chain isomers now you can also take for position isomers the examples can be 1 bromo butane and you can get 2 bromo butane fine so if you are writing like this four carbons and first position you are having bromine in the next case you have at second position you have bromine now completing the hydrogens and calculating the molecular formula let us see what is the molecular formula this is nothing but c4 and h3579 br next one 3 5 6 7 8 9 br so we can understand that 1 bromo butene and 2 uh, bromo butene have same molecular formula but what is the difference here the difference is the functional group is present at first carbon and here the functional group is present at second carbon so the position of functional group is different hence you call them as position isomers and the phenomenon is called position isomerism so in this lecture we have discussed about classification nomenclature and isomerism of halol alkanes hope you have understood this thank you so much